Hi everyone, Sean here. Just want to talk a little bit more about method references and bound versus unbound method references. This is based on question 2.1800. It's a bit of code that I developed testing it out. So let's look at the first one here. Here we're using an unbound method reference where we're going to be calling instance methods on a parameter which is in the lambda. So I'll develop the lambda first of all, and then contrast that with the method reference. And then we'll talk about the bound and unbound. So here, you're using a consumer, and its functional method is void except taking in an argument. So this is going to be the argument that's coming in. That's the T over here. And then we're going to call s.show. Now, if I look at the s.show up here, you'll see it's got a return type of void, which is exactly what the accept method is expecting. So that's perfectly valid implementation for the accept method, which is the functional method of the consumer, where you take in one argument and you return a void. So that's the lambda. The unbound method reference is basically where you just specify the type, which is student, and the method, without round brackets, show. And in the background, Java will create something like the Lambda. And it'll work then with any particular instance of student. So here, in this case, I'm calling the Lambda, passing in the student with S444, and here I'm using the method reference version. And in both cases, I get the exact same output. So that was a method reference which was unbound because I wasn't using a particular instance of student. Let's contrast that now with a bound version. And the bound version is saying that you're going to call instance methods on a particular object. Okay? And this is in the lambda. So here, for example, very easy to spot this with the supplier, which its functional method is get. You're not taking in anything, so you don't have anything to work on, and you're returning something. So I define a student as three. There is my lambda for a supplier. I don't take in anything, and I return something. S3.retrieve, retrieve returns a string, which is SK. Okay, so there I'm using an instance of student, as opposed to up there, I was specifically using the student type. That'll work with any particular instance, whereas here I'm saying specifically S3. So when you're defining your method reference, S3 colon colon retrieve. I always find it easier to write the lambda first and then go and write the method reference. And then when I'm calling the get, in both cases, it's okay. It'll end up with SK and SK. Note here that I'm not using any particular instance. I'm not passing in any particular instance. Get doesn't take in anything. Whereas the except for the consumer, I am passing in the student that it's going to be using or bound to at that time. But when I'm defining it, it's unbound. Whereas when I'm defining it here, it's bound to S3. Therefore, I don't need to use any student when I am executing the Lambda. Lambdas and method references are set up for deferred execution. Now, what about a Lambda where the method is taking in an argument? Well, in this case, the first argument must be student as the first argument is used to call the method that you want to call. Again, it's unbound. You're calling instance methods on a parameter in the lambda. And I'm going to be using a by consumer here, where the functional method is void except taking in t and taking in u. So my by consumer here is student and string. So this is my accept method here. It takes in something of type student, which I call student, and the second parameter is something of type string, which I call str. Now, the first parameter here enables me to call the instance method, take in, and it's got 
there's the second argument going in. So let's look at take in. There it is. Takes in string s and it outputs this dot name and it appends on s onto it. So whatever is in student is going to be the this dot name and then it's going to append on whatever that string is. Let's look at the lambda first of all. There is the new student and then there's lecturer. So it comes up with S5, which is the name, and the lecturer, which is the string that was passed in here. Now, this is a little harder to see in the sense that here we're defining the method reference. And all we're saying here is student colon colon take in. There's a lot of stuff been inferred here in the background. Bear in mind that the context is crucial here. This is a by consumer. Okay, you're going to be taking in a student, therefore, and you're going to be taking in a string. And Java can figure out that, okay, there's a student, there is an instance method in the student class called take in. So the first argument will be of type student, and that can be used then to invoke the take in and then take in requires a string well that will be the string the second one there so that it'll set up all of that for you in the background so that was just a comparison between bound and unbound method references so i hope that was useful if you liked it please click like and if you haven't already subscribed please do so because there's lots more content coming thanks very much